Okay, so here we are again, the Z Show. Um, I'm going to help out some teenagers today. I'm going to give you a little advice. Okay, um, if you want to become financially free, uh, this is for anybody, girls, guys, it don't really matter. But this is if you're starting out, you're trying to leave your mother's house, you don't want to go to college, um, you you just want to you want to you want to be able to to take care of yourself. You know, this is a this is a, a pretty easy way to try to get financially free. Okay, so the first thing you do is you go out and find a job that makes forty that gets forty dollars an hour. So it really don't matter how much you make. I mean, of course, the more you make, the better off you are. So basically get a job that you can work 40 hours a week. Then you set your budget to that. Whatever that is, that's going to be your budget. You work this job for a couple of weeks, a couple of months. And the reason why you do that, and you know, uh, just try to try to you know put your budget down for a house, a car, and all that. Now you probably don't have enough money at this point to cover all the things that you want, type of car, type of apartment that you want. So what you're going to do now is instead of going and asking your boss for a dollar raise, which you're not going to get, uh, try to see if you can get overtime. So now, if you can get two hours overtime at this 40-hour job. That's, that's uh, 50 hours a week, which overtime is going to be time and a half. So it's going to be more, your your pay plus half, right? So then if you can do two hours, try to do four. That's going to put you at 60 hours a week, right? So you should be doing good. So now if you had a job that do not give out overtime, they will not give you no overtime the second option is you need to find you a second job, right? You can get you a second job that works 20 hours, a part-time job that works 20 hours. Now, it really don't matter how much you make. You're not going to be making time and a half, but by you having two separate jobs, they're not going to take as much taxes. Let me give you an example. If you make $600 a week, they're going to take out so much taxes but if you make let's say $300 a week on one job and $300 a week on another job they're going to take out smaller taxes so the person with the two jobs will actually bring home more money than a guy that works one job at $600 a week and if you go up seven eight nine nine hundred dollars a week you're in a totally different tax bracket so if you can make 450 450 you can be in the smaller tax bracket, plus you'll bring home more money. That's just a trick for two jobs. Okay. So now you done set your bills to the first 40. Now you can pay your bills. The second 20, you can actually invest this money. You can, you can save this money. So go about a month, maybe two, maybe three months. And everything you get over 40, you put in a savings account. So your, your extra job, put in your savings account. Your 40, now you, you can do all this while you're living with your mom. Because technically you haven't left your house. You're just at home with this play bills that you making up. Because you want to know, if I leave this house, I can pay my bills. So this is not real. So, you, you, you put the 40 hours a week towards your bills, the 20 hours a week you put into savings, right? Okay, so after a year of saving, you're going to have a pretty good savings account. So, even if it's $400, $800 a month at times 12, the... Um, I don't know if you can do that, but but it you have about nine thousand six hundred dollars if you if you could do let's say if you could do eight hundred dollars a month of saving of your, of your overtime. 
So if you make $800 just on the overtime, you keep your 40, that's for your bills. You're probably about $9,600 if you are um, consistent in a year. So you gotta be consistent, you got, you got a plan. So I'm telling you to plan. So with that $9,600, what you wanna do is you wanna start investing your money. So take probably 3,000 of that, put it into a CD and let it earn interest. So you can put that into uh, a CD uh, CD account. Go to the bank, ask for a CD account, put that $3,000 in there. So now you got $6,600 left. Go and get about $3,000 worth of saving bonds. Now saving bonds double. Whatever you buy, if you buy $100 saving bonds, it's gonna cost you $50. They mature in seven years, most of the time, they te keep them in Indiana and inside of a safe deposit box. You can call them at any time to get the money. But if I was you, I'd leave them in the safe deposit box and I'd put 3000 towards that. Right? So, the other $3,000, I would put towards uh, probably starting me an IRA. Or if you got a 401k or anything like that, get it. Get the 401k. It max out on it. Whatever they whatever they max you out on, if you can go 10%, go 10% of the IRA. I mean, of the, uh, you know I mean, do a separate IRA, but then do a Roth's IRA with your job, and that's for your 401k. If you, you know, if you get fired or quit, you're gonna roll that over into your Roth's IRA. But get a 401k if you got it. If they say 401k, they might match up to 2%, 4%, 6%, whatever. I don't know what they match up to, but try to do 10%. Okay. Now you got 10%, you got your IRA, you have your CD, and you have your um, your saving bonds that you're buying. So you should have about $9,000 in all these accounts, right? So then you, you're just gonna go back and do what you're doing. Your 40 hours a week, you're gonna pay your bills, you're 20 hours a week. Now, on this 20 hours a week, uh, like I said, start doing the 10% uh, of the 401k. So if you do the 10% of the 401k, you're gonna be a little short on your money. So your little extra $20 an hour, you put towards that. Now next year, because you didn't already save about $9,600. So what you wanna do this year is you wanna invest into a business, right? So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get out of the job market. You don't want to work for nobody at this point, but you got to do this smart. Now you got to do a business. Now, uh, there, there, there's doable businesses. Uh, let's say line curve. Uh, you might have to buy some equipment. You might uh, have to, you know, even invest in a truck. You probably can do that with your 40 hour a week job plus the, the second job, plus your savings. You could use that as collateral invest in a truck okay so you invest in this truck get you a trailer and go around and do line care you can uh start cutting people's grass you can do uh you know buy plants from from home depot for like five dollars or whatever you can charge these people 166 dollars to get them a flower bed stuff like that try to maximize your money and you'll have your own business now once you do this, you could actually quit your job if you just put all your time into going around getting clientele. Now, I wouldn't quit my job until I get my clientele up. I try to get my clientele up, I put my card out, I let people know what I'm doing. If you only got a few yards, just do a few yards, stay working. But if you can get a few yards and you can get them to say, hey, I, I, you know, I do you, I do your yard all year, then you probably can get you something, you know, hey, you are. And then if you can get a dealership, like a, a car dealership, their flower beds are gigantic. So you could take the money that you made and go exchange their flowers. Now, I know the place that I, um, that I worked at, they was spent, they was spending at least Forty to fifty thousand dollars a year on just exchanging out their flowers every year. They want new flowers, 
So if you could get a contract like that or something like that, see, you can you can pretty much live on just this lawn care business. Or you could even go and buy in a, buy in a truck and you can uh, uh, contract that truck out to car dealerships, to businesses that need uh, cars and get them to pay you like $300 a day. Tell them you don't have to take care of the, that you'll take care of the insurance. You'll take care of the uh, the gas. All you want is the money. You get paid. If my car break down, you know, I get you know I, I get another ride and I and I do this. So you could contract. You can actually contract yourself on to companies like that. And you can look look around in the paper or look online and say who's hiring trucks with trailers. A lot of people, you could probably make with a trailer $200 a day. Easy. You, I'm telling you, you don't have to work anymore. That'll be your job. You can spend your time with that. Then you can go back into the savings, like I'm telling you, and start building your savings up. Now, you know you're going to have to keep some money to invest back into the company. So don't invest. Don't save all your money. You got to leave some money because if something happened to your truck, you got to pay for gas, you got to pay for these things. You know, so this is just the option. You don't have to do that. You can pretty much start any job you want, but I'm trying to keep it where anybody can do lawn lawn service. I'm not. I don't want to get you in. You know, if you want to be a truck driver, that's cool. But you got to have licenses and you got to be in good health. And there's a lot of things to that. So that that wouldn't be something that you would probably try to do. Uh, but if you own your own vehicle, you could probably bypass the CDL, depending on you know. And even and even if you buy a big truck and you have enough money to invest, you probably could buy a truck and contract onto a big company, making two hundred twenty five thousand dollars a year. But then you pay a driver. You see what I'm saying? So you can pay a driver. You, you don't have to drive and you just be a boss of your own business. This is another option. Now, if y'all got your own option of what business you want to go into, then then you can use that. But this is how you're going to get financially free. You got to have money in the bank that's, that's savings. You're still going to add to all your little savings accounts. <clears throat> and once those saving accounts get bigger and your money get bigger, you might want to invest 10% of the money that you save in the stock market. Now, the stock market, you can lose money, but you can also make money. But you got money. You got money saved. You're not going to take all your money. You're going to take like 10% away from the money that you save for your CDs and your saving bonds and all the other things in your IRA. And what you're going to do is you're going to invest that 10% of that money, still do all your other saving, and you're going to put 10% in stocks. So if the stock make money, cool. If it don't, Cool. Just leave it in the stocks that you think that are, are going to make money. Now, you kind of want to get into the stock market because that's going to speed up the money that you can make. You can take chances when you have money. Now, people that get in the stock market and don't have any money, then they're they're gambling. But if you have money to lose, you're not really gambling and you got a, a, a income coming in. Now, another thing you can do is you could buy houses. You could buy houses. You could use them for a uh, rental property. You know, um, try to get that money coming in. You could rent houses out. You could invest your money into that. Once you get enough money to invest into houses, you can uh, you could buy a duplex. You could live on one side. You can let the people pay you money, and basically they're gonna pay for the whole house. So you won't, you can live for free. You don't even have to worry about living. But this is what you can do when you got money. But when you don't have any money, these aren't options. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. This is anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. Girls or guys. You could be financially free a couple of years away from your mother's house. And then you don't have to live with nobody. You don't have to live on nobody. And then you can figure out other ways to invest your money and make money and start jobs for yourself, create jobs for yourself. Because school, I'm going to tell you something about school and college. College. 
college is trying to get you into the job market. Everything they teach you is about job market. If you're a doctor, they want you to work at a hospital. But actually, if you get your law degree, you could actually be a doc. You have your own doctor's office. You see what I'm saying? And be an entrepreneur and don't work in a hospital. A lawyer, too. Anything you can go to school for, you can actually start your own business. You don't have, but they, they want you to work for a hospital. They want a lawyer to work for a law firm because they want to keep you paying taxes so you could be in the job market and they can make money. That's how the government makes money. The government makes money when you make money and you pay your federal tax and your state tax and that's how they make money. But this right here, I'm not telling you that you don't have to pay taxes, but people that own companies, they get tax breaks. And you go to a CPA, if you start making too much money, you might want to do your, your taxes every three months just to, you know, to be on top of them. If you want to pay your taxes, but you want to see a CPA every three months, and they'll tell you how you can save money running trucks, running any type of business you got. But you want to go get a DBA, you want to do deal and business as, you want to go down there and you want to start a business account in your DBA name, not in your name. And this will give you credit. You can start applying for business credit in the DBA's name. Uh, and you could probably get a, you know, a loan or something just in case stuff happens bad. But, but you'll have business credit. You don't have to use the business credit, but it's good to have it just in case your business needs it. And, and maybe you need to invest in another vehicle. Maybe you need to fix your vehicle. Whatever you want to do, you want to have extra cash. You don't want to always go into your pot because you got to remember, your, your lifestyle is going to get bigger every time you start making money. But don't go too big. Don't go too big where your money, you just you, you hustling backwards. All your money's going out. That's why I try to tell you, set your, you know, on 40 hours, you set what you, at the way you want to live. And, and of course, this can go up once you start owning your business and making money, but don't go over the amount of money that you're making. Don't try to, to outclass everybody and be, you know, keep up with the Joneses and no, go at your own pace. Then if you get married, you can afford your wife. And, and if your wife will help you build, then you could get her financially free. Now, you don't, if a woman don't want to help you build and all she want to do is spend your money, well, there you go. You, you know right then. You need to get rid of her. But be open about what you're doing. Show her how she, that you could save your money and she could do the same thing. Y'all be financially fee free. Y'all can spend time with each other. Y'all can take trips. Y'all go to cowboy games. Y'all can do things together. And I'm not saying life is about money, but, but as long as you live, you're going to have to eat three times a day. And you're going to have to pay certain bills. And if you're thinking about having kids, that kid costs money. So you want to build up your money. But this is how you ain't, you ain't asking nobody for no money. You're not begging for, begging for money or anything like that. I did it. This is what I did. I bought stocks at an early age. I bought, I, I bought CDs. I, at one time, I had about four or five CDs. I had about eight banks full of CDs, RAs, and all that. My money was separated. And as I needed $3,000, I go cash the CD in. I might call Indiana and say, hey, man, let me get some stock. Let me get my, some of those um those saving bonds and they and some of them matured, some of them didn't. But you you know you can make whatever you made. You know, it's a seven year bond, so at seven years you you might as well just go on and cash them out. But if you continue to pay saving bonds, twenty five dollars a month, you'll probably have a lot of them. In four or five years, I, that's what I did. I had a bunch of them. When they sent me mine, I think I had seven thousand dollars in saving bonds. I was just cashing them because I needed the money. But I used to buy them in the military all the time. I would I would spend a hundred dollars a month on saving bonds the whole time I was in the military. 
So when I needed them later on in life, I had $7,000, you know, just sitting there for whatever I needed. So, you know, I don't want to always bash young men and young women or young people about getting money. I just showed you this is no education. This ain't no you 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 LeBron James and you can play basketball or can sing or you're a rapper. But this is just a normal person who's just you can make smart moves and you can make money. Anybody can do this, you know. It don't have to be extravagant to be financially free. It just takes a little discipline. And a lot of people, they're so worried about relationships and all this other stuff. But if you focus on saving money, it will be real easy to save money. Money is the easiest thing to do if you focus on it. The reason why a lot of people don't have any money is because they're thinking about having kids, relationships, they're, they're trying to find their boyfriend cheating or their girlfriend cheating. They got a lot of stuff in their mind. But the first thing you got to do is you got to clear your mind and you got to make an effort. I want to save money and you will be successful. So I thought I'd give a little information out so y'all will not be hustling backwards, trying to figure this out. It's not, it's not hard. You got to be smart. And if you're smart, you can save a lot of money and you can enjoy your life and you don't have to worry about why you don't have money and other people do. Because other people are taking the time out unless they got inherited money. But other people are taking the time out to sit down and be financial literary. You don't have to go to a financial advisor. I did. And, uh, they're full of crap. They're just going to take money from you. So what you want to do is you want to cut all that out. You just want to don't no loans and nothing like that. No credit cards. You just want to go. You want to get a job. You want to set you a budget. And then you want to work that extra 20 hours, whether it's a second job or if you can get if you can get 20 hours a week at your job. You want to do that about three or four years. And then you want to get out of the job market. And you want to create a business, whatever that business is, make sure that business make money. If the business is not making money, you need to go back to work. You don't have to if you if you lose the money, don't do the business. Stop the bleeding. It's OK. It's OK to be wrong. Say it's OK to be wrong. Go back to working. Start over until you can get a business that you can profit money from. Okay, then. this is the Z Show. I'm trying to help y'all out financially. So you young kids, you sit at home, get you a job, plan out your future, and hopefully you'll be financially free. Okay, bye.